Thanks for tuning in once again to the Fox 54 Week in Review. I'm Kenesha Dees. Here's just a sample of what's ahead for you in the next half hour. We're more than halfway through November, but it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. From an excursion to the Smokies to the traditional Huntsville galaxy of lights, we have a few ways to jumpstart the Christmas spirit in the valley. Huntsville is attracting more cyclists, and those cyclists are sharing the road with Huntsville's growing population of drivers. It can be a dangerous combination. We speak with cycling advocates who say the city needs to up its game regarding safety improvements. Plus, we commemorated Veterans Day this past week. You'll want to stay tuned for our story about this veteran and his business, training service dogs for the benefit of other veterans. It will tug at your heartstrings. But for our first story, we go beyond our usual seven days of coverage for one Athens neighborhood. It's been a year of waiting, waiting for responses, waiting for action, waiting for change that as yet has not come. To explain more, here's Fox 54's Ken McCoy in a report we first brought to you in September. We can't get our roads paid. We don't have sidewalks. This story was told to us about a year ago. One of the oldest black communities in Athens is still dealing with the lack of upgraded infrastructure. The main problems is uh, the sewage that is being ran through our community. To better understand, Athens resident Sharon tells her story. This part over here, this ditch right here, this ditch right off in here, which you can see with the tall grass. The tall grass is being tall because the city, the city want us to cut this grass and keep it clean. Sharon explains that when these ditches that border her house fill up, it causes an onslaught of problems. And this is my home where the water had came to my home, flooded out my unit at my house, my air conditioner, and the water was so high until it went up under my house to cause mold. Today, Sharon and other residents of the neighborhood gathered at Limestone City Hall because they still feel like they aren't being heard. Well, I was hoping that they could tell me when was they gonna be able to come down and help fix my house. Um, I've been patient, waiting and waiting and waiting. No one came. Limestone NAACP is standing alongside concerned residents of the historically black community encompassing Luke Street, Strain Road, and Lindsay Lane in Athens. If you want to. We recognize that there are, there are plenty of growth in the city of Athens. And so we ask that the city, that they would understand that we do not want some of our residents to continue to be neglected and denied. One concern, inadequate sewage drainage. They fixed part of the ditches and <clears throat> they didn't fix them all. This is the second time that they ran the sewage down through there. And neither time people have asked to get on the sewage when they came through, but they made excuses why they couldn't have. And I think they should have, but they still should fix, let people on and the drainage need fixing now. And what they are asking for is dedication from the city. We ask them the same dedication you had when you approved a million dollar sewage project for Pepper Road with the American Rescue Plan Act. Stop the empty promises of coming out to do city services. Treat these and all citizens with respect. For Fox 54 News, I'm Ken McCoy. The Decatur community is now waiting as they wait to hear results from the police, uh, Decatur police on the Steve Perkins case. Last week, the chief announced the department wrapped up its internal investigation, but in the meantime, the community is also encouraging a message of justice for Steve Perkins. Our Sedona Meadows spoke with some community leaders. Here's a listen. It's been almost a week since Decatur Police Chief Todd Pinion sent out a letter saying DPD's internal investigation was complete. Although emphasizing it addresses potential policy violations only and that he will soon review the report. For Alabama law, if Chief Pinion finds policy was violated and discipline is warranted, he then turns it over to Mayor Tab Bowling, who then decides what's next. Alabama law enforcement agency is currently doing the criminal investigation. But with more than six weeks since Steve Perkins was shot and killed outside of his home, the community is urging for answers. It shouldn't take no time because you already know what the findings are. You already know what they've done. You know, you know they, they violated policy and procedure. You know this. So, I mean, it's, 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 the, 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 the cam shows it. The door cam shows it. Some days it's like I feel as if I'm on the top of the mountain and I can, I can tip it over. And then some days, like today, 
we're waiting on them to make an arrest. We're waiting on them to terminate. Since the death of Perkins, an original report claimed Perkins, quote, refused to drop his firearm prior to the shooting. Although Chief Pinion has since taken back that claim and said it was inaccurate. Members of the community say they're concerned for their safety and demand more transparency. The fact that there's no transparency or accountability with the police department and it seems as if the police chief and the mayor are just passing a book. It's like, who's going to step up and make this right? Adriana Tapscott, the co-founder of the civil rights group Standing in Power, says their group recently got back from Washington, D.C., where they attended the Congressional Black Caucus. Our sole purpose was to spread awareness for Stephen Perkins. We knew that the representatives in the um, Senate would be there. Different you know, people would be there. She knew Steve Perkins personally. He would give you the shirt off his back. Making this an emotional journey for answers, but something she and other civil rights leaders continue to fight for. We got to get justice, not just for Steve, for the next man. Indicator, Sedona Meadows, Fox 54 News. For Nicholas Perkins, the weekends have always been about family, especially spending time with his brother, Steve Perkins. Steve and I were very close. Um, a lot of times during the week, we didn't get a chance to hang out with each other, but on the weekends, that was our moment. Now, more than six weeks later, his weekends are instead spent honoring the life of his little brother. On the morning of September 29th, I felt like the job of being the protector was taken away from me. Uh, I couldn't be there for my brother like I wanted to. Steve Perkins was shot and killed outside of his home by Decatur police. And this has his family and the community wanting answers as to what happened. Everybody's upset and hurt about this. And not just our family, the city of Decatur is hurt. The citizens are hurt. Since Perkins' death, the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency is handling the criminal investigation, with Decatur PD doing their own internal investigation. And this week, Decatur Police Chief Todd Pinion shared the internal investigation is now complete emphasizing it addresses potential policy violations only and that he will soon review the report. Per Alabama law, if Chief Pinion finds policy was violated and discipline is warranted, he then turns it over to Mayor Tab Bowling, who then decides what's next. It has been six weeks since we've heard anything for real. And um, we're, we're vastly waiting on that answer. Hopefully it'll come back the right answer. Civil rights attorney Lee Merritt, who is representing the Perkins family, says they're encouraged this internal investigation is complete. We know that there's about a 10 day appeals process for whatever decision the chief made. We're anxious to see what his conclusion was. And now the family's legal team is partnering with the community. This weekend being an example of that through a unity cookout. The people of Decatur aren't having enough conversations. And what better way to have a conversation than to share a meal with somebody that you don't know and get to know them. I think with more conversations and understanding, the world will be a lot better place. I just want the community to be able to come together and this should have happened a long time ago and it sucks that it had to happen this way. I've not seen a small community, a relatively non-major city, come together on a consistent basis this way probably since George Floyd. Nicholas Perkins says seeing everyone come together to honor his brother feels nostalgic and a reminder of the man he was. My favorite memory of my brother is when um, his child Avani was born and to see him have that moment and to take it in and embrace fatherhood. It was a very proud moment for me. At that point, he became, <clears throat> he became the man that everybody wanted him to be. And although he can't physically spend his weekends with Steve anymore, he'll always be his brother's protector. My brother's death will not be in vain. I will go to my grave making sure that it won't. Merritt says on behalf of the Steve Perkins family, they will soon be filing a federal civil rights lawsuit. Well, there is a push to bring FBI headquarters to Huntsville and it's by Representative Ohio, Representative uh, Jim Jordan, who is in Ohio. Representative Jordan airing out his grievances about the headquarters debate at yesterday's House Judiciary hearing where an investigation looks into how Greenbelt, Maryland was picked as the site for the new base, beating out a site in Virginia. Here's a listen. We've seen the domain perspective about what happened at the Richmond FBI. We've seen what we've had whistleblower testimony in front of Congress telling about how they've been retaliated against. And we know they censored Americans. The Fifth Circuit told us that. So I don't want it to go to either place. Frankly, if it goes anywhere, it should go to Huntsville, where they already got all kinds of all kinds of land, all kinds of space and all kinds of operations. 
Last week, we told you Alabama House Minority Leader Anthony Daniels announced he was running for the newly redrawn second congressional, congressional rather, district seat. Since his announcement, 20 more candidates have put their hat in the ring, five of which are current state lawmakers. This new district comes after the Supreme Court ruled the previous map was unconstitutional. The district previously covered southeast Alabama, but now extends from the Georgia to the Mississippi line and includes all of Montgomery County and a northwest portion of Mobile County. Business owners and bargain hunters rejoice. Today was the grand opening of a new to Alabama retailer. BJ's Wholesale Club is open. It operates on annual memberships, just like Sam's Club and Costco. The company's been around since 1984, but the Town Madison location is the very first in the state and comes as a bit of a surprise to some we spoke with today. I'm very excited that BJ's is here. I've never heard of it before and I heard a lot about it online. So my experience here was, it was exciting. It was exciting because it's a lot closer to where I live. This store seems like it's a, a little less uh, uh, bulky. And so like uh, for a smaller family of four, uh, it seems like it's, uh, it's, it's great. Well, BJ's members can enjoy discounts on grocery items, general merchandise, and gas. The store is open tomorrow on Veterans Day, regular hours, 8 to 9 p.m. And we did confirm on Thanksgiving Day, BJ's is closed. Well, your drive on University Drive over the next few days could be frustrating, and it's all to make it an easier drive in the future. Our Jasmine Bird shares what you need to know about the changes happening at the University Drive and Research Park Boulevard Interchange. Well, if you happen to have been driving on University Drive this morning, you may have noticed some road work, as you can see behind me. And I'm going to move out of the way so that you can see what's happening here. But this is all about improving traffic flow. So what's going on here today is they've begun work to reconfigure the turn lanes going from US 72 University Drive to Research Park Boulevard, Alabama 255. Alabama Department of Transportation Public Information Officer Seth Burkett says the city came to Aldot with a proposal to make these changes. It was based on a study that they had had done uh, and it said that this would improve traffic flow and the city wanted to uh, add in flashing yellow arrow signals. It's become a very common style of signal in Huntsville. Right now they're working on the striping on US 72, uh, reducing those turn lanes so that the city can come in with their crews and begin uh, setting up those signals, uh, making the signal changes. It, it contains a, a uh, like most signals, a, a green arrow indication, a red arrow indication, and a yellow arrow indication, uh, you know, for your stop, go, and caution, clearance phases of the signal. The work is expected to continue for the next two to three days between the hours of 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. And if you're wondering if this could impact your commute. Check ALGO, uh, either the ALGO traffic uh, app or uh, algotraffic.com and you can see uh, in real time what the traffic delays are looking like. In Huntsville, Jasmine Bird, Fox 54 News. Cyclist groups in the city are asking for improvements to the infrastructure in Huntsville that would make their rides safer. Our Ken McCoy spoke with the group Huntsville Urban Bike Share Co-op and has the story. So the cycling community is very fun in Huntsville. The bicycling community here in Huntsville is very much a community. I think Huntsville is a great place to bicycle. We do need some bicycle improvements. Um, we need some infrastructure to make bicycling safer for everybody. Cyclists in Huntsville say while the city is a great place to bike, this lack of infrastructure poses a safety risk. Huntsville was the first city in Alabama that had a protected bike lane. However, there's still a lot of improvements that could be made. The cycling infrastructure network is definitely not connected. Larry Mason of Huntsville's Urban Bike Share Co-op shares that that causes stress for riders. The way you put a bike infrastructure together will make it more or less stressful. 
So it's not really just a matter of how many miles of bike lanes you have. It's a matter of how stressful are those bike lanes. A big component of feeling comfortable is being safe. A video shared with us by Bass Secretary Vivian Terry shows how concerns like near misses are often hard to report. When I asked Dario Gonzalez if he thought the roads were safe enough, he answered. I want to say no. Um, my oldest girl uh, has trouble making decisions um, when bicycling on the road by herself. But you really have to be like a 30-year-old adult <laughs> to be able to negotiate safely on Huntsville's roads uh, when you're traveling somewhere that's not just on a greenway. They say the city has been receptive, but there hasn't been noticeable improvement. I have seen um, some small steps forward, um, but the pace of improvement is minimal compared to the pace of crashes going on. We will never get to a place where everybody, including my kids, can bicycle and walk safely if we continue at this pace. For Fox 54 News, I'm Ken McCoy. Lockheed Martin's Huntsville site is officially taking digital to a whole new level with its missile system integration lab ribbon cutting held today. The 25,000 square foot facility will allow the company to move with speed and agility in support of its customers' priorities. In other words, it's all about enabling the mission and accelerating the delivery to the warfighter by having a digitally enabled factory. This first uh, integration lab will take a lot of different labs and co-locate them here for us to be able to virtually fly the interceptor to ensure its system performance. And that will help prepare us on our path to flight testing and then production. The, the new factory will utilize smart tools like digital torque wrenches to capture data, enhance accuracy, and drive faster deliveries to our customer. Well, congratulations to Lockheed Martin. 75 students and families connected with the Boys and Girls Club of North Alabama are now proud owners of some refurbished laptops. It's because of a donation from AT&T to the digital literacy group Human IT. The Chromebooks help narrow a so-called digital divide, which affects nearly 7,000 students in Jackson, Limestone, Madison, and Morgan counties. That gap prevents children from reaching their fullest potential. You know, sometimes we're able to help at the club when they're here, but then once they go home, sometimes they don't still have access to those resources. So it'll be, again, just bridging that gap. And in addition to the laptops, the AT&T program pledges to provide families in need with affordable Internet access options and tutorial options to fully participate in the digital world. Now, Fox 54 Top Teacher, sponsored by Calhoun Community College. This teacher we're about to see, no matter where she goes, her good reputation follows. Here's why. She moved from Huntsville to Madison City Schools, and a former colleague nominated her. Meet this week's top teacher from Midtown Elementary School, Diana Golliver. Meet second grade teacher. It's so rewarding. Diana Golliver. This is my first year. At Midtown Elementary School, but her seventh year teaching second graders. Perfect, perfect age. They still love coming to school, can still motivate them to keep enjoying going to school and having fun, but also learning. Golliver has worked 13 years total in education. I was from uh, Huntsville City and moved here this year, and it's, it's been amazing. I love Madison City. Midtown, a fairly new school on the block, but the campus is building its own legacy. Um, we grew tremendously. Just ask Principal Savannah Demeester. From a, a enrollment of 500 students to now we have well over a thousand so we were able to bring in more staff and we were so thankful this year to bring on Miss Gulliver so uh, she is vital and she's actually a leader on her grade level a leader who loves her students they come in give me a hug and it just why you know how why not you know and has a passion for teaching with creativity we get to 275 because that's how much it's going to cost us to make these blankets I love I love getting them hand, you know hands 
hands-on involved, just being excited to come to school every day. And we're doing a project right now where we're going to make blankets and donate them to nine special people. Some advice for new teachers. Don't be too hard on yourself. There's going to be good days. There's going to be bad, but you know, the good outweigh the bad. Good advice. Well, congratulations, Mrs. Golliver. It was a pleasure to meet you. Check out her entire story and nominate a teacher on fox54.com. It takes a special kind of person to have put your country first with their uniform on, ready to serve. It's why people across the Tennessee Valley are saluting veterans this weekend. We made a stop in Athens, where Jasmine Bird gives us a look at the celebration inside the Alabama Veterans Museum. A Veterans Day program hosted by Athens State University honoring military veterans of the United States Armed Forces. <laughs> Being here at a museum, talking about Veterans Day, uh, about the service of soldiers and having the artifacts that, that, that you can actually touch and feel, I mean, that's just amazing. This year's program featured Colonel Eldridge Singleton. He serves as director for UCOM Africa Regional Operations at Redstone Arsenal. Veterans Day is, for me, it's really about, you know, the end of World War I and the legacy of, you know, the legacy of, of service that our service members put out there, regardless of which service they're in. You know, so, I mean, it, it, World War I was really the defining moment in, in, our, in our history, as a, as a, not just as a nation, but as a global you know, structure. Next, I stepped inside the room next door and took a tour inside the Alabama Veterans Museum and Archives. I'm still learning. I couldn't begin to have paid what I have learned in this establishment. James Lee Watson was in the reserves for three years and served active duty for three years. Watson now works at the Veterans Museum and shares one of his favorite archives, a quilt called Threads of Honor. Wish we could frame it, you know, and, and, and save it, you know. We're going to save it in here, but, you know, it's just, it would just be, uh, we just want everybody to see what work they've done. And it was time consuming. And of course, they come out with their fingers kind of crinkled up every evening. Yvonne Dempsey is also a volunteer at the Veterans Museum. It is to honor our veterans and our military. In Athens, Jasmine Bird, Fox 54 News. And as we continue to honor veterans, this week students from two North Alabama schools had the opportunity to lay a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Virginia. On Wednesday, Limestone County students from Johnson Elementary and Cedar Hill Elementary laid a wreath on the historic monument. It's dedicated to service members whose remains have never been identified. The monument is located at the Arlington National Cemetery. For John Pitzinger, Dad's best, right? Yes, good girl. Dogs are more than just pets. You want a cookie? They're family. This is Lena. Lena's a two-year-old uh, German Shepherd and Australian cattle dog mix. That's why she doesn't have tails, stubby tail healer. His dog Lena is there with him every step of the way. She provides uh, service to me for my psychiatric service dog. And just as she is serving him, Pitzinger spent 19 years serving in the United States Marine Corps. I started off as a helicopter engine mechanic, you know, working on helicopter engines. Uh, engine goes bad in helicopter, you got to pull it out, somebody's got to rebuild it. So uh, we'd rebuild it and test it uh, before it went back in the aircraft. East Coast and West Coast did a couple tours in Iraq, a couple of deployments on boats. But while on active duty, he sustained a head injury. Where I had to transition out of the Marine Corps. That was a little rough uh, getting out. And throughout his transition back into civilian life, he realized the job he was in wasn't making him happy. But training his dogs heartened a passion. Uh, that's when I decided that I was going to seek something different and, and help other people out the same way that, that the dogs helped me out. He started his business, Dog Training Elite Huntsville, to help connect people with their pups while partnering with the Malinois Foundation. Helping veterans, uh, place and service dogs with veterans, um, children uh, with disabilities, uh, women survivors, first responders, you know, in need of a service dog, we provide some assistance. Service dogs like Lena. She's been a great partner uh, along the whole way can help veterans in many ways, whether it be for mental or physical assistance, and they can even Somebody detect when a person is anxious. And the different things that our body does, we release different hormones and different chemicals, so we teach them to pick up on those different smells and do different things. 
Throughout Pitzinger's experience helping other veterans connect with dogs, he realizes this is what he's meant to do and encourages those who are struggling to ask for help. We lose so many veterans' uh, lives to suicide uh, because they feel like there's no hope. There's just, there's always hope out there. There's always something better. Thank you for your service, Mr. Pitzinger. In Huntsville, Sedona Meadows, Fox 54 News. Well, if you're home for the holidays, your health is something to keep in mind. Here's why. Although Madison County has the highest percentage of vaccinated people in the state, it also has the highest percentage of COVID hospitalizations. This is according to the CDC. We know COVID is still spreading across the country. You'll need to think about protecting yourself as the holidays approach. For some individuals, it could be very serious, leading to hospitalization um, or even death in some cases. Staying up to date on what's happening in your community um, and, um, and just recognizing that healthy individuals, healthy children can carry these diseases and not look particularly ill, um, but that you might come, become particularly ill with them. Right, and an updated vaccine is recommended for adults and most children. As we journey into the most wonderful time of the year, there's no better place to spread Christmas cheer than at Pigeon Forge's Dollywood this holiday season. The spirit of Christmas will shine bright with more than 6 million shimmering holiday lights, all hand strung, twinkling throughout the park. Christmas culinary, ma culinary masterpieces, captivating stage productions, and of, of course, the rides will also help heighten your holiday cheer. Dollywood spokesperson Josh Sawyer also shared this year's exciting Christmas festival debut of their new drone show and why there's no Christmas quite like a Smoky Mountain Christmas. Christmas is our most popular time of year at the park. It's our most popular festival. And so it's always a spectacle if you've never seen a drone show performed. Uh, it's kind of one of those things that you don't know if you ever want to see a fireworks show again because it is such a high level, such a high caliber of entertainment. So we're very excited to have that this winter. Christmas in Dollywood will run through January 5th of next year. Last year, Dollywood was named the number one theme park in the U.S. by TripAdvisor. Well, it's that time of the year, traveling to see friends and family for the holidays. TSA is expecting about 30 million air travelers from Friday the 17th through the Wednesday following Thanksgiving. They're at 12-day period. And here in Huntsville, we too will soon see larger travel traffic. We're looking at one of our largest months on record, so be prepared that there's going to be crowds in our airport. Mary Swanstrom with Huntsville International Airport says your trip really starts at home. Start with a completely empty bag that you're planning to uh, carry with you. Make sure there's nothing in it that might be a prohibited item that maybe you just stowed in there. And uh, that could really uh, impact your travel time through the TSA checkpoint. Make sure your products are within 3.4 liquid ounces. And don't carry on any firearms or other prohibited items. We've been seeing a considerable number of firearms and prohibitive items coming through the DSA checkpoint here. You can check firearms, but there's a special way to do it. Have the firearm fully unloaded, it needs to be locked in a hard-sided case and in a checked bag only, and you must declare it to your airline at the time of check-in. And with construction happening here at the airport, Swanstrom emphasizes giving yourself at least two hours before your flight. Right now there is one lane of traffic that's closed to cars as you're coming in on Glenhern Boulevard and uh, that is construction of our new cell phone waiting lot. But that might impact folks getting to the parking areas to the deck. It might take a minute to hunt for that perfect parking spot. And as we give thanks this season, it's important to show gratitude to the many individuals working at the airport. It will help you and it will help them also as we get through this busy time. In Huntsville, Sedona Meadows, Fox 54 News. All right, well, here's a precious opportunity to make a difference in the life of a senior citizen this year as we get into the holiday cheer. It's called Be a Santa to a Senior. Home Instead is celebrating the program's 20th anniversary. Be a Santa to a Senior is about making sure local seniors in the community who are alone, isolated, or financially challenged get a gift for Christmas. Here's a listen to how it works. We work with nonprofit agencies and other senior care agencies around town to be able to obtain lists of the seniors in the community that do need assistance. And from there, they get three wishes. And the wishes are, um, you know, tabulated by Tara and I, and they go on ornaments. And these ornaments you can find at different locations. All right, we'll visit fox54.com to find a list of Be a Santa to a Senior tree locations. 
For more Christmas cheer throughout the Tennessee Valley, including family-friendly events, plus ways you can help others in your community through the holiday period, be sure to visit fox54.com. That does it for the Weekend Review. As always, we hope you have a good weekend, and we'll see you next time.